good evening. Uh, this is PCEA Ebakasi online. Uh, being day three of our youth week, we welcome you to a conversation uh, between uh, the young people and the senior citizens. We hope you get value in this conversation. Welcome and God bless you as you follow. And uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah, we, we are glad to to have you uh, this evening as we have a conversation on then and now. And uh, we'll give you a chance to introduce yourselves and tell us who you are and. Uh, yeah, and also what you do, and God is going to bless you. Hey, my name is Asipora Kenano Mugambi. I'm a retired senior citizen. I'm a, I retired as a senior nurse from Kenyatta National Hospital. I'm a mother of three, one boy and two girls, and they are all adults. And currently, I'm just doing my small errands and more so I want to be useful to my church because all along I've been working and no time to give my time to my church. And that's what I'm doing currently. Thank you. Thank you for being with us this evening. God bless you. We're going to have a good time with you. Thank you and God bless you. Welcome, sir. How are you? Fine. Yeah. My name is uh, Godfrey Dongo Nyaga. I'm born again. I confess Jesus Christ is my personal savior. I'm married with one wife, four children, that is two boys, two girls. And I'm happy I'm being called a grandfather. Uh, I fellowship at PCA Utawara, which is in Mbakazi Parish. And I'm happy working for the road, I'm an elder standing for Judea District. Thank you, thank you. You're so glad to have, sir. God bless you, even as we continue having a conversation. Uh, welcome, sir. How are you? Ah, I'm fine. Yes. Thank you for your invitation. My name is uh, Elder Amos Gadogo Juguna. I love the Lord as my personal savior. I worship uh, in PCA Mbakasi. Uh, I'm a retired uh, uh, officer from the military, and now I'm enjoying my retirement. Thank you. Wow, wow, thank you. We're glad to have you. We also have a young person with us. Uh, kindly introduce yourself. Hello, everyone, and my name is Sarah Wairimo. I am a youth in PCA Utawala Church, uh, under Embakasi Parish, and I'm so delighted to be here to have this conversation on behalf of our youth and we are going to interact with our senior citizens and I hope we're going to learn so much from them. Thank you. Thank you. We're looking forward to have a, a, a good time with our senior citizens and uh, you know when you think about uh, the life in the 80s, 70s and uh, 60s, now you sometimes were talking of having a sad best and many other things and I know many things might have changed. Uh, what do you think have changed so far uh, from what you experienced then and what is happening now? Let's start with you, Elder Amos. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry. Uh, actually, so many things have changed. And this is very normal. Because with any given moment, there must be changes. Even in life, we were born babies, and now we are retired, senior citizen. And therefore, changes are expected, but what is important is how you manage those changes. How we used to live, how we grew up, definitely is different from the way our children are growing up. Uh, sometimes we had a feeling that uh, we want to bring up our children different from the way we were brought up because we thought the way we were brought up was not appropriate 
maybe without with modernity, maybe or with advancement, then that will improve our lives. But uh, only to realize that maybe we were mistaken. That's the position. Thank you. Thank you, Elder Godfrey. What do you think have changed? Uh, a lot of things have changed. A lot of things. A lot of things have changed within that period and now because of late I've just started hearing the word digital. Things have changed from analog whereby it's a modern world. With the things which I knew when I was young of today they are different. For example, when I was a little boy, I remember when I joined primary school, a teacher was someone who was well respected as well as the parent. Of today, you can see children of nowadays, even if they meet with a teacher, there's no much change. They are so much close. In a way, the child can misbehave when the teacher is there. But in our days, it was totally different. When to come to our parents, the deep plane was in a high level, whereby to be beaten is at any given time when do a mistake. And some mistakes was not all that serious. Just to click your tongue, just to ignore or misconduct in any simple way. Even if you are not going to be disciplined light and then, let alone when you are caught up with something else, you will be reminded several things which you have done and you are forgiven, and that's the time to pay. But what I can say, discipline should be there when one is young until he is old. Otherwise, that's my part. Thank you. In fact, the Bible says that God disciplines them that he loves, and uh, that's a good one. Uh, Mrs. Kinoti, what uh, uh, has changed? Uh, Things have really changed. We have moved from analog to digital. And uh, we analog, we are the ones who have given birth to digital. Uh, I remember when I was a little girl, I was born in a small village in Meru. And we we had a lot of respect to the parents who were intimates of my parents. So if we, I met Amse, who was my father's intimate, that one was my dad. If I met a lady who was my mother's intimate, that was my mother. And if, I, if they caught me doing something wrong, they had all the right to tell me, stop what you are doing. But now, the children, our children, we have overprotected them. They are not keeping the discipline. Because with us, when we saw the teacher ahead of us, we could let the teacher pass. But nowadays, you see the children arguing with the teachers. And at my youth, as a small girl in the village, I was, taught, I was taught how to do the milking. I could milk our cows, and I could take our milk to the dairy. And then from there, I go to school. Nowadays, there is no extra work that children are doing. We are also doing farming, because our area is rich in coffee, and the tea. And the picking tea, it was the norm for us Saturday when we are not in school. 
And the other thing, what we knew, we knew we go to school, we come back, no communicating with the boys. We were told boys, no, not, no standing on the sign road. If you want to have a man visitor, bring the man visitor in the house. And it was really difficult for us because we were not around by age. Our work is to do the kitchen work, the farming work, and then you read. We didn't have electricity. We are using the kerosene lamp. Sometimes your parents could not afford. So you could do homework in the kitchen. And by all that, we worked very hard because we know we could eradicate the poverty when we attain good education and we go to a secondary school so that we can leave the business of picking coffee and milk. And th those things were making us be strong and respect our parents because they didn't have anywhere else to get our school fees. That is the only way they could get their school fees for us to continue with education. That is so... That's such a huge difference from how we live today and how we are brought up today. I mean, picking coffee, I don't even know how to pick coffee, even farm work. I don't, I have little knowledge about farm, farm work and I know most, most youth are the same way. And I hope we're, we're going to learn how to integrate that old, old lifestyle with how we live today. Farming was so normal to them, but farming is so old for us that we don't value it anymore. I hope we're going to embrace farming as part of the, as part of the older things our, the senior citizens did, that it's, it can be something we can, we can use as a source of our livelihood as youth. So on to our, on to our, our first question. Were you troublemakers when you were kids and when you were teenagers? Ama, you were, you were disciplined and responsible children. Let's start with Mrs. Mugambi. Uh, I was not a troublemaker. I was very obedient because I feared to be beaten by my parents. Mm -hmm. Especially my mom. She was very harsh on us. She wanted us to attain the education, so we feared. So we had to respect her, and then not even to move around. And I started knowing how to cook. Early enough, anything that she wanted us to do, I was the first one in the family. We are a family of seven, and I'm the first, second born. And I could do my work diligently. That's so nice. Thank you. Elder Godfrey. Yes, mine, I can say it was a nice time because respect was there, obedience was there, fearing the parent was there. Because even to go to Sunday school, it was not a choice. It was mandatory. You have to go to Sunday school. So, with us, it's not like today where you see some youth to go to church. They are being begged. Can you go to church? Ours was, you have to go with alone or with the parents. Working was there because we have to cultivate our shamba. In fact, I remember during our time when it was a sport day, which is not in our school, you have to move to another primary school. Our parents were happy to say, are you the one going to participate? Are you playing any part? If no, then the alternative was go to shamba. And you are being counted some lines which you have to cultivate and finish. If not, you have to be given a different kind of work, like going to grace your 
cows or goats. So our time was so much utilized because we started working when we are very young. Before you go to school, you have to milk, you have to feed the animals, then you go to school. Coming in the evening from school, you have to do the cleaning, you have to do all the basic things like fetching water, and you make sure things are in order. When the parents are alive, they find the house clean and you are ready to eat whatever is being cooked. So there was no time to be naughty or be disobedient to the parents. So it was a busy. And as I said first, to be beaten was like a flash of an eye when you misbehave. Okay, thank you so much. How about you, Elder Katoko? Uh, uh, I did not get into trouble <laughs> when growing up because I really feared to be in trouble. I really was, ve I was very obedient. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I don't remember in one time not doing what I was supposed to, to do. Uh, and that is why I was so much admired also by your parents. Because the moment you are obedient, then you are darling of your parents. Because that is what they want you to be. So the question of uh, being uh, disobedient could not arise. Because discipline was key even when we were growing up. Uh, as much as mostly we were living with our, our mom because our father was working in the forest as a driver. So most of the time we were living with our mom and she was so strict, so disciplined. We could not say that you could misbehave because your father is not there. That is not the, the, the question because if that happens, your father will will show up during the weekend and you'll get all the information and uh, you'll have no place to, uh, to stay. Therefore, the, uh, we always try to evade trouble as much as possible. And the only way to do that, just be obedient and do what you're told. That's all. Okay. So there was such a huge difference in how uh, you, you, as, you respected your parents and you were, how you were disciplined than how the youths today are disciplined. Because as you say, you feared uh, getting beaten. And these days, not most parents are using that method of, uh, of correcting their children by beating them as a way of correcting them or, discipline, or disciplining them when they do something wrong. That's quite a difference. So uh, what mistakes uh, can you see in today's, parent, in today's parenting than the parenting uh, back in the days. Uh, we can start with Elder Amos. Uh, actually, there's a huge difference uh, compared to our time. Because I think parents are so busy doing their own things, either working or doing business, they have no much time for their children. And therefore, mostly children are left on their own to do what they want. There is no, <clears throat> there is no strict uh, guideline or discipline or instructions. And uh, also, again, because of modernity, sometimes pe uh, children are, we are bringing our children in, ab in urban centers as opposed to the rural areas. And you know, in urban centers, there's not too much work. Maybe uh, there's no farming, there's no rearing of cattle, so the work is limited. And uh, also, again, because we cherished education, we thought that uh, maybe our children concentrating only on education would make their life better. But that is our undoing. Not showing our children how to do the chores, wash, clean houses, go farming, or going to the market to get uh, food. That is our undoing. We are always pampering our children and that is what has made most of our children very, very responsible today. Yeah. Okay. How about you, Elder Godfrey? What mistakes can you see in today's parenting? 
the parenting of today is different from those days because okay the parent or each parent love his child each parent love his children but the thing which make things change those days and today is so much love whereby instead of building the child to become a better citizen you are spoiling because of too much love whereby if someone has done wrong you have to specific point where he is wrong or where she is wrong and you collect it if you don't collect at that particular time or that particular age even when he gets old or he grew up because you have spoiled the child from the beginning to make the child change it's a little difficult we have a kikuyu proverb which is says you have to straighten a tree when it is young because when it is grow you cannot straighten it again mute orongago we munyinyi that's the word so we have to with a lot of love let us show our children the right way if um, this is my water and i have to drink it to see a small child coming and snatching it from me to me because of the way i'm being brought up i cannot allow is better for that this water to be mine if the child need a water you go and look for her some more water if is not there i can offer what i'm taking with the child but whereby to cry to be given this water or to be given this mic and you are there and he can even switch off a radio because he doesn't want that ch that channel because it's a child and you have said and you are parents and you are there and you cannot do something to change such a thing to me even today i don't feel to tolerate but i have no choice i just wash but i just a device just to train your child when he's young as he grow that's what i can say thank you how about you mrs magambi uh, the parenting of today patre we are the, we are the ones to blame because let's take sometimes the children can come at home they are discussing about a teacher or somebody or a neighbor and we participate and especially if the child tells you i'm not going along well with a certain teacher in the of your parent finding out you go you bust it to the teacher and then what happens the teacher just ignores your child and leaves them there and they create a behavior of not even respecting their own teachers of not even respecting the the neighbors the other thing we have become absent parents instead of being a present parent we are so much engaged in our businesses working and we have left the children alone and the way technology has changed you can see a small child just holding a smartphone doing all the discoveries whilst she is not or he is not concentrating for with something that can, that can shape up the life and because also you are a, an absent parent we have left our children in the hands of the house girl they adapt a language that you as a parent you are not able to change 
because you are not there. And especially now, let's take our girls. They grow uh, knowing the house girl, the behavior she has been teaching them, that is the right behavior. And the parents, we have no time to collect that. She gets the time, she gets old enough to get married. And when she enters in the marriage, she doesn't know how to cook, how to serve the husband, and then you will find them in the eating places, supermarkets. I've brainwashed our girls. They don't even know how to cook. They go in the supermarket, they buy food, and the main food is rice and chapati. Ask yourself, rice and chapati, for that young man, where is the energy for tomorrow? You can see when this expectant girl going in the supermarket buying food, <clears throat> ask yourself as a mother, where did you go wrong? Because there is no child who is going to be born strong enough. We end up getting children who have man mantration because of our failure as parents. And when we see the technology, it has changed. It has brought up the behavior change to our children. They are no more listening to us. You can see them wasting a grandparents. They come. Instead of talking or even sharing with their grandparents, they are busy with their smartphone. They have no time of any type of discussion. They also want to avoid discussing anything with their parents. So, I personally beseech the parents to be present parents so that we can bring good morals to our sons and daughters. That son, when he gets married, let him have a language from their dad because he has seen the dad doing A, B, C, D, a good thing to bring up a happy family. Let's not leave our children to our household. Yes, we are busy looking for money, but money is not everything. Money does not bring happiness in the family. I can only describe money as our friend. Let's wake up. We are Christians. We pray for them. We teach them the way we were taught. Let's not also be churchgoers. Let's be somebody, mothers and fathers, who are present to their families, so that we can build a strong nation. Thank you. And uh, thank you for uh, to you and uh, ours. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Commander. There's something called uh, first decision. That when you're growing up, uh, that uh, you are disciplined. Uh, little did you know that uh, you, you become a member of a disciplined force. And uh, now we're talking about uh, the first, I've heard of forced discipline, imposed discipline. Maybe what would you be your advice to a parent out there who's their youth, their children are rebellious. What would be your advice to them? Maybe they've tried to bring up their children, but they have not been able to succeed uh, to bring them in the right way. What would you advise them? Uh, thank you. Uh, as a, having been working 
uh, in a disciplined force. There are measures that are taken to impose discipline into our children. And uh, once you are persistent with imposing that discipline, eventually it sets in and uh, it helps that, that uh, child. Uh, and they only realize this when they grow old, when they overgrow their childish behavior and their rebellious behavior. You have to be strict and very persistent. And also you have to be fair as well. Uh, sometimes we only comment when a child has done something wrong. And sometimes we don't even applause when they do something right. So if you want uh, a child to be understand the effect of discipline, it is good to have a balance. The moment a child has done something nice, commend that child uh, for what he has done. If he has done something wrong, that is when you need to be on that particular child and show the reason why you cannot entertain that kind of behavior. Sometimes you need to advise and tell them the effect of what they're doing. It might not be noticeable at that particular time, but after they grow, they'll know the effect. Some people, even today, live in regrets because they did not do what they could have done when they were young. For example, concentrating in school, because today the only business for our children is only going to school or going to college or going to work as opposed to us when we were growing up children was uh, uh, going to school was uh, was uh, not the main thing uh, if you could ha have told your parents that you are not interested in the school that was his fun because he has he has found a helper in the farm. But today, because there are no farms here in the, in, the, in the city and the like, the children have no other thing to do apart from study. And that is why the element of idleness is also contributing a lot to indiscipline because that child has a lot of free time to explore bad things. But for a child at our age, by the time you go to farming, you go to rearing of cattle, you are so tired. By the time you come home, you don't have time. You only eat and sleep. Sometimes we never even used to shower after evening chores. It's only eating and going to sleep. You are forced to go and wash because you are tired. But today is very different. But what I can say is that it's good to insist on uh, the virtues of a child you despise the vices that they are doing. Be strict, but be fair as well. That is only when discipline can be effective. Thank you. Uh, thank you, and God bless you. Uh, Elda uh, Dungo. Now, uh, there's a saying that says, if you force it, you break it. Uh, what is your take on uh, imposed or forced discipline? Uh, someone out there, a parent is watching, and uh, uh, the, the, their children are rebellious. They don't know what to do. What is your advice? Uh, with a lot of love, you have to do something as a parent. Because when your child don't make it, she'll come back to you. Either dialect or in dialect. So it is good to see that the child is going on the right track. You have to continue persuading them to take things seriously and do the right thing at the right time. When was going to school, not to take it as a joke, is to know I'm going to school with the reason that I have to make it. Not that you are forced to come out of the house. You give the benefit of going to school and what you'll get after schooling. 
When I give an example of myself, my parents loved me too much being the firstborn in the family of 11. And uh, the way they treated me, they used to talk to me so that I can do them best so that later on I'll give them support where they need. And in that case, they were taking education seriously. It's only that I did make it. I did not make it the way they wanted. But whatever I did, it helped them in one way or the other. Uh, when I finished my secondary school, there was no chance to continue from there. And what they did, they tried to talk to Fred, and uh, I got somewhere to work at the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport as a cleaner. And when I started as a cleaner, I, later on I became a messenger. From a messenger, I went to be a clerk. From a clerk, I ended up being the senior sales executive when I was retiring. Why? Because the process they had taken me when I was young, there is nowhere I failed because wherever I engaged working, I was doing perfectly well than even those who are graduates. And they loved me because of my, of my work. So I can persuade parents, keep insisting to see your child is doing the right thing at the right time and at the right place. That's what I can say. Uh, thank you, thank you. One thing that is coming out very well is that discipline and uh, has a role to play even uh, when someone uh, gets matured. And uh, uh, Mrs. Kinoti, you talked about uh, people who are getting married and maybe sometimes they cannot be able even to handle their families well. Now, uh, can you connect the, the, the breakups you're seeing in the young families uh, to maybe parenting and how these people were brought up and what would be your advice also to the uh, parents and also to the young families? Now, as we are as parents, what I can tell my colleagues, my pa parents like me, the biggest investment that we have and that which has consumed all our energy, they are our children. And this investment, because you have put all your energies there, you want to see it succeed. I would advise my colleagues as parents to start family meetings. The both parents, the mother, the father is there. And even if you are a single parent, have meetings with your children. The procedures of each and everything, how you want things done. Let your children understand what you own is yours, not theirs. Teach your children to start working on their lives, not to wait and depend on you. Handwork pays. When they see a good house that you have given them, let them also understand they have to work hard so can, they can have a good house. They can also have a good car. Because by the time you are not with them, they will remember you installed this to them. The children are there nowadays looking at parents. My dad has bought K, K, something. 
We have our car. This is not your car. This is your parents' car. It is you now to work hard and get your own car and get your own home. And then these children, as they have grown up now, they have started their homes. Let them be patient. With the little money that they have, let them combine. The young man and the young woman, nobody starts from the mountain. All of us, we start from under the tree. Then you climb pole pole. When you start at the top, you just fall, you won't make it. Don't keep on budgeting on your parents' money. When you sit down, you as a young mother, as a young husband, move with the means that you can afford. If you have a bed sitter, be satisfied with that one. Try to work for bedroom, one bedroom. Then from there, you end up having a mansion it. And that one you will get from your handwork. When you budget with your parents' money, the girl will say, my parents. And the boy will say, my parents. Your home can never succeed. The only way you can succeed is your parents or your friends. But you are running. You are not going to become a parasite. Start making your life different from your parents. Work hard. And for us parents, it is we continue with these children, giving them advice, meeting them, discussing with them, with the young parents, not you as a mother, you discuss with your daughter only. Even if she brings a complaint in the home, call both of them, you hear their grievances, and you stand on the gap, you start finding them, trying to help them get a solution. A solution is not to kill one another. A solution is a way of how they can cope up with life. Life has never been smart. Even as we started with no three part, we were just barefooted. And now, we can't even count the pair of shoes we have. And we did have one. In fact, our agement, we only sized the shoe when we are going to form one. We didn't know about the shoe. We only knew walking barefoot. We are not saying that you adapt that, but it has made us what we are. And you as a young mother and father, you have to start from somewhere under the tree so that you can lace up your own family, you build up your own home, where you can be proud to say, um, so and so. And even if you go to a place of work, all of you nowadays, you have degrees, masters, you get somebody with a diploma, but that person is your boss. Kindly please appreciate the position you are in. Give out your energy. 
your brains to the company, to the place where you are working, and you will climb the ladder. Whatever you get, share it with your husband, with your wife. And you lady, you young mother, if you happen to hold a possession bigger than your husband, respect your husband as a husband, don't call him a failure, don't tell him, don't tease that young man, he is not able to provide, he is sitting under your money, no. Be humble, discuss, put the money into your project and appreciate this young man knowing one day he will climb the randa. Be praying for one another. Appreciate your places of work. Appreciate the small money you are getting. That is how we can stop this breakage of families, killing one another. Let's move out of that. As parents, I'm sure all of us, we are there to support you people so that you can also bring us good families and we will be proud of you because we have invested on you. Our youth, we have used it to, on you. Please, be, I beg you, be responsible parents of tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. And, uh, uh, we advise even uh, those young parents, uh, those, those uh, young parents who, who those who are earning more than their husbands, you respect that husband and uh, support them. And uh, God is going to take even your young family to a greater height. Uh, thank you and God bless you for, for that insight. And uh, yeah, I hope we, we are good. So on to the next thing. We're going to talk about salvation. Christianity has become a worldwide religion today and... It's something that we appreciate because we are we are learning well, our where we come from, we, how we are created by God, how we should relate with others. And can you tell us how your salvation life has been, and what are the challenges that you you faced back then when you were getting saved and your journey up to now? Let us start with you, Elder Gadog. Uh, thank you for that question. Uh, actually, I got saved back in 1986, November 26, and uh, that's changed my lifeline. And I always say, were it not for the salvation, I could have been long dead. Because the kind of lifestyle I had before salvation was not promising at all. And I don't think I could even be having a family because that is what uh, uh, I was doing because I used to spend all my money in alcohol, in uh, pleasures, peer pleasures. And uh, that does not go well, very well to a person who wants to develop because if you are an habitual alcoholic, you can never do any development. You always postpone whatever you want to do, even if you want to buy a shirt or a trouser. You'll uh, realize that you'll, you, by the time you want to buy a, a trouser or a shirt, you have already spent your money on alcohol or on friends. Therefore, when I got saved, it became a big relief to me because I quit uh, alcohol, drinking, and from there, I started life on another trajectory altogether. And because now you become responsible, you are answerable to your maker, your creator. You realize that you are not here on this earth on your own. 
it is a life that you live to live. And actually, nobody uh, was brought to this life without a reason or without a purpose. And most of the people don't cultivate to know the reason why they were brought to this life. But the moment you get saved and you connect with your creator and your maker, you start exploring why are you living? Why are you existing? And you try to search through the Bible, through prayers, through the Holy Spirit to guide you. And that is what has brought me to where I am. Because I am sure, were it not for salvation, I could not even have kept my job. Uh, I was young at that time. I was around 27 years. And uh, that is the peak of a, a youth. You, are, you feel that you are on top of the world. Uh, you have money, money to drink. But you find that at the end of the day, that money, uh, it's not enough. When you start now directing it, development on your family, it's hardly enough. Uh, because even when I got employed, the, my salary, I, I, I got, I was being paid 400 shillings per month. That is back in 1980. And uh, that money, I was paid in two installments, not once. After every two weeks, I'm given 200 shillings. And out of that 200 shillings, one is deducted for sports. Therefore, I'm paid 199 shillings. But I, because I had no family, I used to see the service a lot of money. Of course, but it's, it could only last me two days. Because the moment I'm given that money, I'm paid on Friday, I go on a weekend. By the time I come back on Monday, I don't have a cent. And because in the military, you are provided with everything, so food, uh, uh, you have the uniform, so you can even have, live without clothes. You have a shelter, and therefore you don't need money. So, and that is what has spoiled most of the people who are in the military today. If they don't realize that they one day retire, and they'll not be living in government houses, they'll not be fed by the government kitty, you'll be on your own. That is why you find most of them, if you are not well, prepared, they are very miserable. But so salvation, I can say, really saved me because now, other than maybe getting advice from my seniors from military, I got counsel from the church, from God, from the Bible, and that really helped me a lot. So I can say, if you are saved, that is your safeguard. Guard that jealously. Don't lose it because it will shape your morals and you'll be upright and will be applauded by so many people because you'll not be in conflict with it. many, many things. That's the position. That's true. Salvation really helps in, in our daily growth and, how, and who we become in the future. Elder Godfrey, how about you? Your salvation life? That's my... I would have said. I think we felt in the same category. For me, when I realized I'm lost, is the time, is the day I knew that I have to go back to my maker and I got saved. And immediately I got saved, things changed. They changed in a manner whereby I have to think of who I am and where I'm heading to. Otherwise, without calling yourself for a small meeting, many people get lost. The immediate accepted Jesus, I became a Christian, I started committed with God's work. God blessed me in many ways. Whereby, anything I have today is what I achieved after I got born again. Nothing I can count I had before I got saved. Why? Because those days is a matter of enjoying without thinking of tomorrow. 
but God is good. I'm alive today, being protected by He. Otherwise, if I had continued to be on the other side, the devil had could have weaned me and I could have been buried long time ago. But when I accepted Jesus as my personal savior, things moved and that's why I'm being categorized of one of the senior citizens and I plead with the youth, if you are not born again, please come into Jesus because that's the only area you can hide yourself from the devil. Otherwise, if you give your life to the devil, he knows how to treat it. And the devil, there are things he loves most. He likes people who are, who love or they like happiness, enjoying whether it's food, whether it's undertone, whether it's stealing the devil, those are the people he deal with. So, but in the God's side, he only learned things where you should be a good conduct. And to the youth, I can tell you, if you have time, read Proverbs 6, 16 to 19. Proverbs 6, from 16 to 19. There are seven things that the Lord hates and cannot tolerate. One, a proud look person, a lying tongue, had that kill innocent people, a mind that think up wicked plans, feet that hurry off to do evil, a witness who tells one lie after another, and someone who starts up trouble among flesh. So it is good to know what God hates. So when you're on the God side, he will protect you in all ways. And that way, you stay longer time. With God being our helper, the life is there. But with the Satan, you will not go far before you die or before you destroy many. Mm. So let us stay in Jesus. Yeah, That's so true. There is, no, there is so much blessing and so much learning in Christ. Uh, Mrs. Mugambi, can you tell us about your salvation, maybe the challenges that you have faced? <clears throat> okay. Okay, salvation is a key to success. One, before I got saved, I first employment, I was very busy in doing businesses. And uh, I was posted far back the the place called Nandi Hills in Lift Valley. Who we used to do a lot of farming because I and learned about farming from home. So what we did we we went there, we hired shambas and we were growing a lot of maize. We were very busy. And I could get my salary that time, which was around 875, 875. I put it in the envelope. I posted to my order to my parents so that you can educate the rest. Because I had money. The, the, the maize we could sell. That place is very fertile. So we were digging and selling maize. And then I got involved again in Busia. There were my friends who were posted there. So we could go there 
spend in Busia, we cross to Uganda. You to cross to Uganda, we bring materials, we bring gas cylinders, and we are selling. And all that money, we can do anything, because there is money, you have no family, you, you are there. But also God was kind on my side. He was still looking for me. You are mine and you have gone the another way looking for money. And then I came to realize ah, you are looking for money in the wrong way. I went back to Christ. I cried to God and he saved me. Then from there, I abandon now these friends and the business of Uganda. Because that time we were taking a lot of risk. This is the time of Indamini, so we couldn't be short. And we, the way we were moving, I can't even explain. We reach there, we come these things, then we start telling them in Kenya. I said now, even why am I straining? I have no family, I have nothing. Why am I looking for this money in this dangerous way? I went back to my farming, could farm there. Then after we have, have had an harvest, I started paying my tithe. From home, I was a Methodist person and my parents. There, the Sony ACK which was there, I went there. So I became a member. And we continued. And God could start opening ways for me, could grow peace, we sell. I was doing good farming and a good business. And I continued. I moved from there. I came, I got married. I stayed for some time, then I got children. And from there, I came to, first I was posted in Zika, then from Zika to Nairobi. I've stayed in Nairobi, the same hospital, for many years. I've served for 38 years. And I'm very proud because I was attached to the sick. You can be sick body-wise, you can be sick mental-wise. And then when I knew Christ, and Christ heals, I could do my job without getting tired. Because I knew if I touch the life of the sick, God will touch the life of my children, the life of myself, and everything of mine. And I started working very hard, both at my place of work and in my church, and honoring what belongs to God. And I urge youth to maintain that because when you do that, now God counts his own ways and he fills your pockets. And from there, I started climbing the randa and climbing the randa, the favor of God, getting promotions, and I got good salary. Comparing with what I was getting before and what I returned getting, there was no comparison. So I tell the youth, patient pays. Be in Christ. When you are here, as parents, we are very happy. When we are seated here, you are my children, happy. 
I'm not, you are not wasting your time. You are doing the right work. You can be tempted by your peers. Wewe kwa nini unakaanga kanisani? Kwa nini umeolewa na church? Don't entertain that. Be a Christ child. He will invest in you. He will give you children. He will give you a husband. He will give you a wife who will open the ears to hear what you are saying. And when you are in Christ, even bringing up your children, it will be easy. Even that neighbor who makes noise at night, you will have time to pray for that person. You will have time to talk to a police who are be Christ is the way. That's what I can say about salvation. I am moved with it. I am now I'm still saved. I love the Lord and I say it round that I'm saved. I love Christ as my personal savior. He has made me to achieve many and still I'm on the way achieving much what I've not achieved. And more so, giving you health, sitting here, and you are above 60 years, telling God, thank you for what you have done to me. We started many, and we finished a few. And for us who have finished that race of working, and now we are here, we are saying now, Lord, this is the time you have given us to do your work. And we are ready. And please emulate from us and see us as our parents and see us as our parents who have been blessed because we are able to move from our houses to here without any assistance. We are not in the hospital. We are okay. We pray for you. We love youth. And we want them to taste this water of Jesus Christ who saves. That's what I can tell you what salvation means to me. Thank you. Thank you and God bless you. And uh, David said once I was young and now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous uh, forsaken. And indeed the Lord has worked with you even as uh, the senior citizens. Yeah, and we also urge our young people to continue trusting in God, having patience, uh, because even when the Lord was teaching the disciples to pray, he told them to begin. Our Father who is in heaven, they are reminding us today that everything good is begun by our Father. So we thank you. God bless you and do well. Indeed, it has been a good conversation. We are looking forward to have more time uh, even with you as we continue even uh, mentoring our young people. Uh, thank you for those who have been watching online. Uh, God bless you and you. And this uh, time I welcome us uh, 30 seconds to give us your final remarks. Let's start with you, Elder Amos. Uh, thank you. I could only say I'm very grateful for this opportunity to come and talk to our youths and everybody else who is watching online. Uh, please don't waste yourself. We don't have much time to live for. And uh, let us strive to live the best. Uh, if you waste yourself, you'll eventually live in regrets. If you have an opportunity to do something, do it to your best. Give it the best shot. And again, the moment you do your best, you will leave a legacy whereby people behind you, because there are still kids watching over you, they will once say, you lived well, you did well at your age, and you never regret. More so, trust in God. Don't trust in your own ability. Don't trust in your own education. Don't trust in your family and your wealth of your family. Trust 
God for your life. Because everybody come to this life with a purpose. Maybe the purpose you came to this life for is not the same for your, your parents, your dad or your mom. Ask God what is the reason of my living. And more so, it should be pleasing to God. At the moment you have that, you'll have blessings for your life. And uh, you'll also have blessings from your parents. Because an, uh, an obedient child is a darling to their parents. And God will bless you. Don't go kindly give us your final remarks. My final remark, I can say, our youth, they are energetic, they are learned, and it's a matter of utilizing what they have well. What I can say is that, remember, one day you'll be old. What will sustain you is what you did when you are young. That's why we have a Kikuyu Proverbs which says, Okuru Ureyaga Wethi. So, start saving. You can save through the circle and you can invest from there. You can save through the bank, but don't eat all what you are earning in a day or in a month or in a year. Start saving slowly, slowly. If it happens, you are at the chamber where you can learn some land to cultivate. You can think of an investment of three to four months, an investment of four or six to twelve months, or you can do an investment of five to ten years and you will make it. When I say like that, I meant when you hire a shamba and you think you want 3,000 shearing, just plant cabbages. Within three or four months, even if that cabbages will not have so much in price in the market, you'll make your 3,000 very easy because of the status we are right now. If you need not, if not cabbages, you can do potatoes or beans, wherever you are. Provided you have a target, I want to make this money within these three months or six months. If you need a project of six months, you can think of something like maize or wheat or layering chicken. So give yourself a target, what you want to make. Not just to go and start working without your target. Just go saying, from this time to this time, I want to make this much. So, and you target from there. And with God's blessings, you'll achieve what you want. If it's a long-term investment, go and plant trees. If you have somewhere, you can plant. If you plant a tree today, after 10 years, Count the number of years you have right now, you see how old you'll be. Still, you'll have good time to eat what you have invested from today to 10 years to come. If those are good trees growing well, you make a lot of money out of it. Okay. You can, if you have a small plot, because it's not everyone who have got a shamba, to plant trees, if it's just a small plot, just make rental houses. And at each end of the month, if they get tenant, you're being so getting something little. So start small, aim high, and with God's blessings, you'll make it in life. There is this issue of online businesses. You are digital, you are land. Try to look online what you can do not necessarily to be at the reserve no even when you are in the house you can do something at the city and you make money provided you are safe to get time to read get time to work then you'll make it 
If you take a phone, it can make money for you. But if you, you take it in the wrong side, it will not take you anywhere. So may God help you to be wise and see your future, what you can make it to be. And first of all, fear God. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Ari. Give us your final remarks. May I say this? Eh? For our youth, time and times wait for no man. Life has no diaspora. What you have missed, you have missed, but Kuteresa si kwanguka. Uh, we have been talking how you are using to dig, to do farming, to milk the cows and to do what. And you as youth of Utawala, youth of Siokemau, youth of Embakasi, can you come now with something that you can do manual? I don't understand why we should pay for people to wash the sanctuary, the church. You can do allocation of your duties. The ones in Utawara, you come, you clean this church, then on Sunday, you give us a bill. That one will pay it obediently. We will obey and we are going to pay. You make money for youth development. Be innovative. Get a car wash. The ones, all of us who have been blessed with the cars on Saturdays, any other day, we will bring our cars to be washed in your car wash. And in that way, you will get money. We understand people are going abroad. And these are the manual jobs they are going to do. Why go abroad to clean other people's car? Clean ours here and you get money. So that time management, you will be able to use your time well. It is not a must that you get a job. Yes, you are educated. You are learned. We don't refuse. But you have to start making use of your time. Budget your time in the right way. And from that car wash, God will bless you. We will, uh, we will expand the kingdom so that you can be entrepreneurs of many other jobs. Any job can pay you, you get money. There is no money that is written, this is from a cleaner. There is no money that is written, this is from a president. No. Can we stand firm? We work with the little we have. We use our brains. Not you to be in the smartphone all the time. You have been told about smoke farming. Do something. Do something that will make your brains work. And you have been promised God will bless the work of your hands. So youth, I challenge you to wake up, start thinking. Don't start telling your dad, you are not looking a job for me. Don't tell your mom, we are doing nothing. We are doing something because we have brought you up. So that's why I'm telling you, life and snow, you start when you are strong, 
And when you come, come to our age, you will be able to be lecturing where you started. Please, don't engage yourself with other things. Other things, they will come later when you have organized yourself. You don't organize yourself, you become a useless person. You become a useless young man, you become a useless young woman. Please, we beg you, you are in church. Can you be, can you have some difference with the ones who are not in church? That's the time, that is the way, and that's how you can spread the gospel. And now, Youth in Utawara, you are with us, we love you, even the ones who are not here, even the ones who are listening to us, we love you, we cherish you, and we are there for you. Do something for yourself so that you can shape and you can use, you trace your energy the right way. That's what I can tell you. Thank you so much. We have definitely learned a lot. Salvation is life. We have learned how to be, how to be good parents in the future as, uh, as we as we continue with our life, we have learned how to how hard work is key in whatever we do. And having to begin small is not something we should shun away or something we should be ashamed of. Uh, and also patient pace. Thank you so much for such such lessons and such teachings to us as youths. We we definitely will practice such. And we thank you and may God bless you for having uh, availing yourself today and also for talking to us thank you so much yeah indeed we grateful we would have loved to continue with the uh, then and now uh, but uh, join us next time uh, for now and then then and now and also subscribe to pca Bakasi online and god is going to bless you see you next time